Hi, in this video I will explain and show how to lace a motorcycle wheel and uh, uh, I have some good news and some bad news. <laughs> the good news is that uh, lacing and also building and showing motorcycle wheels that I will hopefully show in following videos, I don't think we'll be able to record all that today, is a fairly simple process and I believe, I uh, haven't put it to the test yet, but I believe that a 14-year-old child can do that. Uh, I'm saying this because in my experience from uh, various uh, wheel builders and uh, sources, it often gets uh, represented as some mundane uh, mystic art, but uh, in truth it is a very simple straightforward process and if you do it step by step you will get it done and you will be able to build a good wheel, even from the first time. And now comes the, the bad news. It does take uh, a lot of patience. As you build more wheels, it will take you less and less time. You will get a bit quicker, but it does take patience. And whenever I try to make some shortcut or to do something a bit faster, different, it often results in having to do it, to take a step back and do it properly. That's the case with most stuff mechanics, but for bicycle and motorcycle wheels, the principle is the same, a simple, straightforward process. Just do it patiently and calmly. Uh, everything that I show in this video and the following videos that I'll hopefully make is what's worked for me. And that is what I'm showing. The easiest way that I do this. Any feedback, corrections, additions are, as always, more than welcome in the comment section. Of course, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. But uh, here, let us begin with this. The most important tool for lacing and building wheels in general is this. This is uh, like a paper tape that's sticky and it's sold in uh, most hardware stores, supermarkets, even some and uh, DIY and painting stores. And if you don't get this when you start, you will remember it <laughs> When, when, it, when the problems happen and you, you'll probably remember this story. But uh, phones ring, uh, people come in, ask questions, you get interrupted. And uh, also, as I will show on the wheel, the first thing that we'll do when you st start building a wheel, it might happen that you are not certain if you've gone through half turn or one and a half turn. Because as we'll show, you always start and end with the valve. And the first thing that we'll do, and uh, in order to not forget, is to mark the valve. Valves, uh, it may sound stupid and obvious, but uh, you might be able to miss it. Especially during lacing, when many holes look similarly, we'll mark it. So here, this is the, the valve. It does look a lot different on this rim especially, but still, nonetheless, I will place some tape on it and have it masked and I'll do that even from the other from the other side just in case to make it more visible more obvious and don't take my word for it give it a try and see how you fare for me this is a this is a must so that's the first thing that we did I almost forgot <laughs> before we start to do anything you should make sure that your hubs and rims are in good condition as well as spokes, threads, nipples and that the rim is uh, relatively straight and, and true by measuring its effective diameter on several places because if you start with a rim that is out of true you will not be able to get a uniform uh, spoke tension and to build a, a durable wheel so the rim needs to be fixed or get a new one if it has some big kinks or or is deformed in, in some plane, whatever. So that's important to pay attention to. Now let's move on. And now before we get on with lacing and everything, in case you are trying to uh, restore a wheel, so you've taken it all apart, cleaned it, uh, removed any rust or whatever. So if you're working with used parts, this is very important to, to consider. 
First, I will take a look at the spokes. Here we have two spokes. They are of the same length, and this has this is this was from for the same wheel, but they are different. Now, can you see the difference? Sometimes it's even less obvious. This spoke has this curve a bit more curved, a bit more angled, and this one is a bit closer to 90 degrees. So when you are unlacing a wheel, it is important to pay attention the spokes that come on the outside of the hub. Let's show it here. So spokes that come, well, let's see if this, this one is too thick for this hub, but that, that go for, from the outside, they are put at a bit greater angle and they have a bigger bend here, while those that come on the inside, they are pointed more or less straightforward, so they have the, the opposite of that bend. And uh, when you are reusing old spokes, if you use the ones that were on the outside and put them on the inside, then the greater bend will be a bit unbent and that creates a more, more needless twisting. It will make wheel building more difficult, even lacing more difficult probably, and it will definitely reduce the life of, of your spokes. So always uh, divide spokes into groups. It's easiest as you are unlacing. Later, sometimes differences are even less noticeable than here. Here this is very, very obvious. The difference is great. It may not look it, but this is, this is one of the, the most pronounced differences that I could find, and that's why I put these aside for the video. So that's the, the first thing. Sometimes you have uh, different spoke lengths. In that case, you will have four groups of spokes. The ones that come from the left side of the hub's flange and on the other, out, outside. Then the ones on the left from the inside and another two groups for the right side of the flange. So, of course, if they are of different lengths, you might just uh, sort the inner side and outside and you will see which ones are which length, of course, but nonetheless, uh, it, it makes sense to, to think about this before you uh, make it more difficult because sometimes it's, sometimes it's difficult to tell. Okay, so we'll put these aside now. <clears throat> the same thing goes for the hubs. Here I will try to show it you can see small marks on every second hole. Here, here, and here, and so on. That's where the spokes that come from the outside and pointing that way go. So I would expect that on the inside, I will have holes marked in the opposite direction because it's a cross-laced wheel, as they mo usually are. So I will now turn the hub around, and when I turn it around, the mark will be in the same position because I've turned it for 180 degrees. So let's see about this hole. Here, I'm not sure if it's visible in the camera, but this is where the, the, the old spoke was. On the outside, it's a lot more visible. It's a lot more noticeable. Here, maybe this hole is a bit better. So you can always uh, uh, relate on the outside spoke uh, holes flange holes and then maybe more easily spot or if there are no marks assume that if it was and if it is a cross laced wheel as this shows the other spokes should be going the opposite direction as I've explained in a video about uh, science behind the spokes how spoked wheels are built to be strong you can do it the other way with, with hubs that have flanges like this but then you're creating another kink in the opposite direction and that weakens the structure. So it's best to try to use what was here. Okay. Another thing to pay attention to is which is the right side and the left side. If hubs are, and they usually are for motorcycles, are not symmetrical. So for me, it's easiest to start from the right hand side and I always do it like that. And that's how I show in this video. And this is the right hand side they are noticeably different. The same goes for the rims if they are not symmetrical. So you, you pay attention to that, how you want them 
aligned. Okay. Now, in order, this was just a sort of a introduction and precautions. In order to do this uh, wheel lacing, we need to prepare the spokes, to prepare the rim, and then to do the lacing. So it's like three steps. Let us start with preparing the rim. In order to prepare the rim, you need to lubricate this interface where the nipple will turn. That's where the nipple goes. As you put, because you want the nipples to turn freely and easily, you don't want any, uh, any friction to cause more binding or more uh, scratching and damage. So, what I like to use with motorcycle wheels, what I like to do is to use some small brush and some anti-seize paste and generously smear it here because this anti-seize paste is very easy to clean later. I'll make a separate video on anti-seize pastes. I hope I won't forget. I always keep promising that and <laughs> never get to it. So that is the first step and you will start from the rim and do it around the whole the whole, the whole, start at the valve and do it around the whole rim. That's what I already did here. Uh, alternative way to prepare the rim is to use a thing like this. It's sold in supermarkets or stores generally, like some cotton wool on a stick. And you just dip it into some oil, whichever oil you have is good enough generally. And you just dip it and, and then use it as a brush. So that also works great, but anti-seize provi provides a longer anti-seize protection, so I prefer it, especially on motorcycle wheels. Then come the spokes. For spokes, the principle is the same. I use, use a brush with some anti-seize and here it is. I just smeared on one side and I make sure that all the threads are coated with anti-seize, that will make uh, nipples turn freely without binding and without damaging the threads. So there's no need to put a lot on the, on the spoke itself, just on the part where the, the threads are. I overdid it here. And you do that with every spoke. Here we have 36 spokes and I did it with all of them. Alternative quick and dirty way is to just take all the spokes and dip those threaded parts into this, let me show it. So I will just make sure they are all even and then dip it all. I won't be greasing these now to not attract any dust or anything, but I just make sure, no, no, no need to go very deep, just, just the threads and then just make sure that every extra is on some rug removed and let them bit uh, like not soak, but drip off and then you can proceed with lacing your wheel. So we've done now the preparations. I've already did most of the spokes and the, the nipple holes and now we'll get on with the wheel lacing. <coughs> I will remove this so it doesn't get in the way. We have our nipples. There's no need to especially prepare those. We've prepared the threads and the, the rim. And now we can get on with, with lacing the wheel. So I have my tape at the ready. I sometimes even cut out a few sections to be at hand. And now let's get on. Now, uh, you begin. Here we have new spokes, so I don't have to worry about which go to the inside, which go to the outside, because they're all brand new and this will be formed as I uh, finish building the wheel and do the stress relieving. So I will start with the uh, spokes that go from the inside, because it's more difficult to start with spokes going, going from the, the outside when you have to then later, as it is crossed, get the spokes from the inside between all the other spokes that are already there, then you will have a problem bringing them up and moving them to the rim. So it's a bad idea and that's a, a relatively common mistake in my opinion. So we will start on the right hand side. And here this is the outer spoke and I know that every second hole is for the outer spoke. So I will start with one that goes on the inside. So not here, 
not here but one from the inside okay so here it is this is the first spoke from the right hand side and now where do I put it on the rim let's consider that here you can see we have this hole goes a bit towards this direction and to the to the top of your screen while this hole points to the same direction but to the down to the bottom then we have two holes that go again top but towards this side and to the bottom but towards this side so they are opposing angles and it is not uh, it, uh, I want to get it right and how do I know which one it is let's consider that if okay I hope it's visible in the camera and uh, here we can see that the outer spokes are going this way which means that the inside spokes will go in the opposite direction because it's a cross laced wheel that's also visible if I turn the hub around and try to look at the marks but that's the the way the, this wheel will be built so I need uh, to find a hole that points to the back and towards this side towards you so that would be this hole and next to it is for the op opposite side the other hole that points to the to the back sort of or to in this direction as, as, a, as this spoke shows but on the opposite side of the rim so that is where I will put the first spoke through and then take a nipple and thread it just a few turns here as you can see this spoke this nipple hole goes towards one side of the rim and then the other goes from the for the other side of the rim this direction this direction then we have one that goes to one side in this direction and one that goes in the to the right, right hand side but towards us towards back and this, this go towards the the front so that's that's the thing to to figure out and I'm not 100% sure how visible it is in the camera but that's the point I hope this background is better and you can see that maybe maybe we recorded from the outside now maybe that's better I'm not sure which makes it more visible in the camera that the holes are all pointing in different directions they repeat every four holes but the adjacent ones are all pointing in the different directions here let's try to show it this one goes this direction this one goes this direction and then in the opposite ones if I've shown it and explained it properly okay so that's good now all I have to do is take every second hole on the hub's flange and every fourth hole on the rim you can see now this is one one two three four again shows in the same direction one two three four again points in that same direction so as we finish lacing we will twist the wheel a bit like this and then start with the opposite side spokes that will go use these holes and so on it will be more uh, clearly visible when we are almost done so let us continue this is probably not the best way to do it but I have no other way to show it so we go with the second one and why, why do we have four spoke difference we will see that when we get near the end one two three four okay and I will probably cut the rest of this uh, procedure out of the when I'm editing but all I'm doing is taking every second hole just be careful concentrate and make sure every second hole you use a spoke once you started right just make sure it's every second hole here and every fourth hole on the hub on the rim one two three four if you are not sure the fact that these spoke holes are at an angle 
will show you clearly if you've missed something and done something wrong. Okay, so we've laced every second hole on the hub and every fourth hole on the rim and do a visual inspection. Here my hand is in the way, but do a visual inspection and you will notice if you make an... <laughs> You will notice if you make a mistake, it's better to notice it right away than when you are almost uh, or halfway through. So this is the, the beginning. Okay, now we need to do the same for the spokes that go from the other side, on the inside. And which spokes do we choose? Again, since I know that the right hand side, the outer spokes will point in this direction, I cannot twist the hub this way before we cross lace it, but I have to twist it the other way around so that when these spokes come out of this angle, they will be crossed. So the hub will be like this. And now, if you look at the hub from the top, you will notice that they have one uh, hole left from the, this point and one to the right. They are not perfectly aligned because this needs to follow the spacing that is on our rim. So we will choose either this side or this side. I have to look at the marks on the other side of the rim to figure that out. And from what I can see, these have, this one has marks on the outside, so this is the inner, the inner one that we will look for. And it should end here, next to this one. So we have one from the right side, one from the left side. Let's try to double check that. If I look at this rim, I can see that this hole is pointing to that direction, but towards the, the bottom now. So that is from that side. Spoke from that side should come in, while this other shows in the completely opposite direction. So that's definitely not the one we want. So let's now bring it back up. And I usually start as I'm looking from, so I start like from the opposite side. So I bring the spoke back in and double check on the other side to see if it's all aligned. Looks good. And now I can untwist the hub to get some more room and put in a nipple here. Just a few turns, making sure not to cross thread it. That's more than enough. Okay, once I've done this, I can completely turn the rim around. And now again, all I have to do is use every second hole and every fourth hole here. But if I made the first uh, round from the right hand side as uh, properly, that means that here I can use the old spokes as a reference. I know that I go one place to the left from the adjacent spoke on the opposite side. So it's even easier, you, I don't have to count the hole, so not here, but one step in between. And in this case, from this direction, one step to the, to the left. Just, it's all about the pattern. And it's relatively easy if you are patient and careful to see if anything is off with the pattern. Like if I put it here, I can see that it's not, that's not it. So every second hole and likewise, if I put it here, I will notice, hey, they are already crossed. It's not good. So, so I go parallel. When I was a child, there was a very cool music shop called the Green Ace. And uh, most shops in my city, uh, have uh, that have old style doors that need to be uh, manually swung open and closed. They usually have, uh, especially if the doors are made of glass, they usually have it written uh, push or pull depending on how the door is uh, aligned and and whether you are coming in or out. But the the Green Ace, they uh, most of their customers were <laughs> rebellious pu punk rockers and metal heads. And so the owner wasn't insisting. Uh, the doors of the Green Ace said, 
it's easier if you push <laughs> or it's easier if you pull. So that's what I'm trying to do here to show how I think it's the easiest way to do it. But again, I don't think insist and many people do this in many different ways. And that's whatever works for you is good. I also think it's fair to note that I'm not a, I would not call myself an experienced motorcycle wheel builder until the number of wheels I've built and trued is counted with four digits. So take everything that I show and do with a grain of salt. That goes for all the internet, but here I think it's fair to note I would call myself an experienced bicycle wheel builder but for motorcycle wheels I need a few more years of practice at least because I only do this occasionally and I do this as a hobby for my own and for for friends and local racers and bicycle bicycle <laughs> and the classic motorcycle people restoring and things like that so here we are now the, the whole rim is laced. I will switch it back to the right hand side. I always use that, that as a reference, it's easiest for me. And here we can see this will twist this way because there are still marks that show in which direction the other spokes will go. So I can now also, and it's a good idea to also visually check do I have every second hole on both sides and are these in parallel in the same direction with two holes in between now because we have only one more hole every second on this side and the same for the other side so so far so good now for the the opposing side spokes we will be going from the from the inside and let me show you if we had made a mistake. If imagine if these were spokes that were coming from the outside. Now when I need to put this through, okay, I can get it through, but now how do I get it crossed without scratching the rim and bending the spoke to get into a hole? It's very difficult. So it's easier. <laughs> this is easier. I will take it from this side. In this case, it does not matter where I start. What matters is that I do one across, two across, and then I will go into the, the hole that points in this direction towards the outside. You can see these two holes. This one points to the inside, this one points to the outside. That's one way to tell. Another way to tell, and that is also useful, is that in order to keep the rim in balance, I need to have one from the left, one from the right. Then one from the left and one from the right. It's always uh, alt alternates. So it would make no sense to put two spokes that come from the, from the right in this hole. So I need to use this one. And the hub needs a bit more of a twist. And I will try to get this spoke in here in place. Okay, just a few turns. Okay, double checking again. So one across, people often miss the first one because it's very close. One across, two across and going to the, the next hole. Okay, that looks okay. Now we need to repeat that seven more times for this side and eight more times for the other side. Unlike with bicycle wheels, I will not be going under. I will not be crossing spokes like that because they are very rigid and it would create a lot of problems. And it's not really necessary. So again, one across, two across and here. If you, if you look also, I will have problem. It will be too long for this hole and definitely too short for the next. So it's practically after I've started right, it's the only hole where I can get it aligned. I 
I am competing for the most uh, ASMR most boring video against the dripping faucet. So please like, share and subscribe. Okay. I am going to be on YouTube building motorcycle wheels. <laughs> Special cheers for my 667 subscriber Punishers MC from California. Hi. <laughs> I build wheels like I ride motorcycles, surprisingly slowly. Uh, one more thing. Uh, you can use some wooden planks to hold the rim above the ground and maybe something to support the hub so it can work more easily and with heavier wheels it's often a good idea to do that and here this is a, a, for a relatively small uh, low powered motorcycle and I can easily do it almost like a bicycle wheel. Okay, double checking again it's always good to double check it's better to do one step back than to do it all over again so let's see i have all the all the spokes coming two across and it's always one from the right then one empty then the other from the right and then comes the left hand side spoke and then again so double check to make sure that i haven't missed anything as i said especially with rigid motorcycle wheels once you start properly, it's difficult to do it any other way than properly to the end, but it's best to double check. Now I'm turning the, the wheel around and I don't have to look for aligning the holes or anything because right now this should be fairly easy. I have only one hole where this can remotely reach it while being two across. So I cannot go anywhere else. See here, this is the only hole that's left available. I have one that's directly above it, so no crossing. And the next one is all the way here, so not even remotely long enough. You can build wheels with a different number of crosses for one compared to the other side. And that's a bit more complicated. And I generally don't think it's, uh, it's beyond the, 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 this, uh, Exotic lacing patterns are beyond the scope of this, this video. It would take probably 10 hours. So here I've just placed uh, one nipple and now just moving on. And that's practically the whole video. I will just finish this up now. And I hope you can see in spite of my, in spite of brevity not being among my virtues, how, how simple this is. I, I might try to make a shorter video where everything flies really quickly and flashy, but uh, this video, it might last an hour, maybe even more, but uh, the, my idea was to show that it really is simple and it's almost in real time. I don't think I'll do much cutting and editing here. So that's all it takes to slowly build a wheel with talking, explaining and telling dead jokes. So. You can do it and it's very meditative and it's very cool to build your own wheels and these classic wheels with spokes, in my opinion, they look uh, uh, most beautifully and they, they have something that, that is special. So this is the first step and in the following videos, because we don't have that much time, I hope that soon I'll be able to make a video on the truing process that happens after this procedure is done. So this uh, I will show the whole lacing procedure and then when I start the truing process it starts from this point no matter which wheel I grab to show it on. Any corrections and additions as I said are welcome from experienced wheel builders. I don't have many people here to talk to and uh, to learn from and all I could do was trial and error and books and some videos but I am not very happy. The most videos are too interesting and not detailed enough for my taste so I made one that's long and boring. <laughs>
a few uh, gotcha sketches and caveats. When you get to this phase, when you start to put the wheels, that go, the spokes that go from the opposite direction, then you only then you will notice if your spokes are too long or too short. If this protruded a lot more, let's let's put it here. Okay. So, if this spoke protruded a lot more, I, I would have problem uh, to get it in because they don't bend very much and it would probably scratch the rim as it tries to get in because this, especially as I'm nearing the end, does not provide too much leverage. Sorry. Okay, now where was I? So, if you uh, have the spokes that are too long, you will see right as you start, even from the, from the right hand side, before you get to the left hand side, that you will have problems. If, if they are too long to get them into the, the hole, they will scratch the rim and you will have to bend them a lot and this will not provide enough leeway to make it fit. If, as you go to the left side, you will definitely know it, even if you manage to get it done on the right hand side. Likewise, if the spokes are too short, you will not be able to get them near in nearly uh, near the hole enough for the nipple to start engaging the threads. You will not be able to wiggle it. Here you have some wiggle room, but you will not be able to wiggle it enough to, to get it engaged. And that is a, a certain size, sign that something is wrong. Either you've made too many crosses because the, if you make, if I build this, we, okay, let's finish the thought. Either you made too, ma too many crosses or the spokes are too, too short. And just a brief touch up on the number of crosses. I could have built this wheel three across. Of course, then this spoke, if we look at it, would not go over one, two, but it would go over three spokes. So it would end up someplace here. And you can see this angle. It would go all the way here, coming over these, these holes, closing them and at a very awkward angle. So it's not always possible. If there were more holes, if this hub had more spokes, then it would have been possible. But in this case, it's not practical and the angle would have been uh, more, more steeper, probably more, more greater angle here. So it would have some sort of a kink as it enters the, the rim. And I talked about that in a separate video here, just I'm mentioning it briefly. So how to figure out that something is wrong and that you need to rethink what you're doing or check on the the spoke lengths. Sometimes they send you the wrong spoke length and so on. And that's another thing. Never trust the given spoke lengths. Always measure them just in case and also always measure the rim's effective diameter and compare it to what you had before if you are rebuilding a wheel just to make sure that everything is right. Sometimes they get it off by a few millimeters. Not too much of a problem but if they get it off for more then you have a problem because this side where the the tire sits is one thing but depending on how much they make of a kink here to bring these spoke holes closer or further away they can add, uh, change the effective rim diameter and that will affect the optimal spoke length so that's another thing to pay attention to I should have said that right from the start but anyway I hope that this was at least a clear video for for lacing. That's it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you some other time. We're going to watch football now. <laughs> Champions League. Cheers.